smell better than you. I, I've lived longer. Condoms? You don't need condoms. You're not having sex. You're not gay. It's just a phase. You'll grow out of it. Aren't you too young to know about that? Because I said so. Because I said so. Because I said so. Okay, my name is Jake, and I am doing a research project on what starts or stops youth from talking with our given and chosen families about sexuality. I'm going to ask you a few questions about the conversations you have or don't have with your given family. Then I'll ask questions about who you talk to about sexuality outside of your parents. I'll write answers to the questions, which will be kept anonymous and shared as a part of the Illinois Caucus for Adolescent Health's Research with Youth. ICA, the Illinois Caucus for Adolescent Health, is a network of empowered youth and allied adults who work to transform public consciousness to support the sexual health identity and rights of youth. We've been working with school and healthcare systems pretty intensely for the past few decades, and now we're launching into work with family systems. This past fall, ICA youth leaders began sharing stories with each other about what family meant to them. So they said that youth of all identities from every familial makeup need to be having these conversations outside of a school context. And so we decided to investigate what that meant. ICA has been working from a reproductive justice lens since 2007. Whether that means dealing with racism, sexism, homophobia, we're concerned with all of the factors that inhibit a person's ability to make decisions about their bodies. This is why we decided our research was so important because we needed to explore what types of conversations young people were having at home, what types they were having outside the home, and where and when those conversations failed or succeeded. When I say given family, I'm talking about the adults you live at home with, like your parents or grandparents, whoever. We define a chosen family as a supportive community you put together outside of the family you were given. This can include some friends, but also adult allies, boyfriends, girlfriends, whoever, okay? Given family are those people who you live with. They are your blood relatives, abuelos, or your parents. Chosen families provide you with support, friends, allies, ex-relationships, teachers, or ministers. So the purpose of the project is to legitimize families of choice and families of origin. So to talk about the importance of both of those different communities as being equal. We were also interested in building the capacity of both of those families and communities in having conversations with young people about sexualities. We want adults to be able to support young people in their decision making and also in getting information, really changing how the general public understand young people's ability to make decisions about their bodies. because we get tired of being told who we can talk to and who we can't talk to about sexuality. Because they're still living in the 20th century mind frame and they're not as educated and as modernized as us, as us youth right now. So we'll start with questions about our given family. Why did you decide to create a chosen family and what events occurred that caused your chosen family to come together? The people in my chosen family, I can trust them with anything and I t always tell them everything. With my chosen family, we all experienced, you know, our tragedies on the same scale. There may have been different tragedies, but they were experienced on the same scale. It just happened naturally, yeah. just growing up from childhood to now, knowing them for so long, it just turned into like the best friend type yeah. thing. In my old Latino family, it's really just, you know, the penis and the vagina. And that's as far <laughs> as it goes. And there's, there's you, you don't hear of anything else besides that. They build chosen families in order to have accurate, accessible, friendly conversations about sexuality. We really want young people to be the authors of their own stories and be able to speak in their own voices about how to change these things. We're 
just circling words that um, identify certain connections that we're seeing between the answers that we're given by people. So right now I'm circling stuff that deals with being open-minded. So for the folks who were doing codes, right, the people who went through all the research and looked at what connections we saw between the answers, what y'all learn? Parents don't really feel comfortable talking to their children um, about sex because they feel that at our age we're not ready for it or we're not mature enough for it. So they just try to avoid the conversation altogether and when they do talk to you about it, it's kind of like you shouldn't do it. It's always a negative. It's never a positive when it comes down to sex or sexuality. Particularly if you're LGBTQ, like I found that a lot of um, the people that I interviewed about and they were talking about their own families, like they just can't talk about that. actually helps you pick which one the family. My parents told me not to hang out with certain crowd, like the gang members and everything. And then when I, when I actually fell into that whole situation with gang bang and all that stuff, you kind of see their point and what they were telling you. And then your chosen family kind of helps you um, helps you out with your, your, your given family because you talk to them about your, your, your uh, given family and you have a conversation about like, how should I talk to my mom about this certain thing? My chosen family, I feel like I can trust more when it comes to like personal issues. Mm -hmm. And I and I obviously like I trust my family, but not in the same way or to the same extent I do with chosen. So we're in the middle of our research process right now, which means that our young people are interviewing their peers and they're also interviewing parents and given families about sexuality. We'll code our data and come up with a research report to share our findings with our communities. Next year, our young people will build campaigns around the data that they've spent this entire year collecting. One thing we came up with, we were going to do a pre-survey and a post-survey to see what they learned and everything. And we wanted to ask more like yes or no questions and more short questions, actually like the opposite of what they're saying, because we wanted to get data. And so you can't really put data if you have like so much vague questions like we got from these interviews. So you want to like yes or no so we can have like charts and graphs of well, the statistics show this and statistics show that. Reproductive justice is about bringing the margins to center and using the populations that are most affected to address social problems and health disparities. So ICA is a statewide organization, but we also connect to national efforts. One of the ones that we connect to is the Strong Families Movement. It's a national initiative to connect and change the narrative around families and understanding that all families matter. We want you to be comfortable talking to given and or chosen families. Yes.